He's right. I didn't get them. You have hmm? blueberries. You just need a big banana. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome to Mumblecast, the only structured brilliant research podcast extravaganza. My name is Liam, and as always, I'm here with my co-host, Kayla. Hi. Hello, Kayla. How are you? I'm well. How was your date going? Wonderful. Wonderful? Yeah. How is the dogs? They're good. How are the dogs? Getting good. better by the day. Are you excited minute. for a snowboarding trip, which we're currently on? Yes. Yay, me too. We are hitting it hard. Maybe, depending on how my shoulder's feeling. Yes. So, last week, we did, uh, this week, we're going to be getting back into the dates, see yes. if we can try and get through... Um, from 1950 to 1960. 1950. Yeah, 1950. The year was 1950. And what happened? We're about to find out. Yes. Um, let's take it into it. Yeah. All right. In that case, well, let's, let's get, get ready, ready to, to mumble. mumble. So we're going to try and get through these 10 years and we'll try and make sure there's some good, interesting facts here, but we, we definitely should have said it like a 50s like radio host. Oh, yeah, we should have. Yeah. It should be like an effect over our voices, like a modulator. Yes. Um, in case you haven't heard these episodes so far, guys, we've done three already. This is our attempt at going through some interesting facts about every year from 1919 all the way up to this year. This was meant to be for our 100th episode, but then we realized that it takes absolute ages to go through them. It does. And we didn't want to do that. We, we didn't want to make a six hour podcast for we, you guys. We missed our 100th episode too. So That also. Yep. So well, the good successful podcasts do good things in the 100th episodes, we don't and we just let it go for five extra episodes. Anyway. 1950. The information I have on 1950. Oh, yes, here we go. So, apparently, according to like um, improvements and like machines and electronics and all this sort of stuff, workers in America today would only have to do about 11 hours of work per week to be as productive as someone in 1950 doing about 40 hours a week. Really? Yeah, which is kind of interesting. It makes sense. It's like writing up documents, all that's a lot quicker and easier, and mm-hmm. well, all these things with machines are a hell of a lot easier. But I imagine, like, if you took all the, you would still be doing. Like, if you had the stuff now you had back then, you'd still be doing forty hours. Yeah. So we're basically so much more productive now than we used to be. Yeah, because we're still we're so that eleven hours would be like a, a forty. Yeah, so you're doing four times as much work back then for a quarter of the yeah but now we have we're still doing 40 if not more hours a week Mm -hmm. so but i guess that's doing at least at least four times the amount of work yeah but i guess there's probably also four times the amount of things that need to be done you know it's Mm -hmm. like because there's so much more of everything going on to some degree i don't know that probably works for everyone because teachers you're still teaching the kid well maybe because it takes a little bit longer to yeah for kids to write out their stuff because they don't have iPads and stuff now. Yeah. Something like that, probably. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Also, um, is Valley Dude Ranch something? Valley Dude Ranch. Oh, no. So, ranch dressing was originated from the Hidden Valley Dude Ranch in 1950 in Santa Barbara, California. I don't know. Hidden Valley Ranch was that old. Yeah. So, there you go. That was was the original one. It's, what, 70 years old now? Yeah. I thought ranch would have been about way before the 1950s. Before? Yeah. I didn't think so. Oh, that seems like a very like simple a dressing to have been. 80s thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You think it would have come out in the 80s? Yeah. No. I don't know. I don't know. Me neither. Obviously, I don't know. 1951. The 1951 Boston Marathon was the first post-World War II athletic competition to invite Japanese athletes. Okay. It was won by... A Japanese citizen. Okay. <laughs> um, I would try and pronounce his name, but I'm not quite sure how to. Shige- Let me see Shigeti this. Tanaka. Where's this at? Um, you can try and look for it. It's 1951. So not only was it the first one to introduce him after World War II, and then also it was won by one of them, which is kind of interesting. Shigeki Tanaka. That sounds better. Yep, nailed it. Also, the Les Paul started selling its classical electric guitar. Okay. Which is kind of cool. That's very cool. As in, I thought, again, I thought Les Pauls were a bit older than that. I thought that would be older, too. But, yeah, I guess 1952s, I don't know who would have played one before that, because electric cars weren't really about before that, were they? Mm. So I guess that's probably why. When did electric, electric cars must have been 40s and 50s, right? Yeah. It couldn't be much before that. No. Yep. Um, 1952. The only person I know famous that played that, well, no, I don't even know if they're famous. Anyway. In 1952... It uh, was the year that Tony the Tiger started telling people that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes were great. They're more than good. 
<laughs> They're great. Or oh, is that what you used to say? Yeah. I can't remember. Um, I'm, I think Tony the Tiger is one of the only characters from cereal boxes that transfer across from the US and the UK. I don't we have any of the same ones you guys have. You don't have Snap, Crackle, and Pop? Oh, no, yeah, okay. We have two then. Okay. I don't have anything else, though, because all your cereals we just don't Do you have. have Count Dracula? No. Do you have... Do you have Cocoa Pops here? No, we've talked... We have Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. Uh, you have Cocoa Pops. But is that it's monkey? different. No, um, it's a toucan. Okay, so we don't have a toucan. What about Fruit Loops? We don't have Fruit Loops. What about... about do you have Honey Crunchios or something? Honey, it's like Cheerios, but if like honey flavors, if we be we have i mean it's honey nut cheerios oh no maybe we don't have that maybe i'm just thinking i've seen that here <laughs> what other ones do we have, do you have ricicles with no, space we have man rice krispies we've talked about we've talked about cereals before no we have rice krispies but ricicles like a frosted version I, of yeah, rice krispies. I know. no we don't have those oh because i looked them up last time <laughs> oh, okay. oh, yeah yeah i recall because um, that was such a weird name yep i think all the cereals we have oh clearly do you have wheatles yeah do you have can't think of any more it's off my head. I can't think of any more character. What about Fruity Pebbles? Nope, not Fruity Pebbles. What about? We have Lucky Charms, but they don't actually. Get, they don't Charms. actually. They don't. We don't get them in America and Britain anymore. Oh. So used to when I was a kid, but not anymore. That's Did, about it. Was the Leprechaun still on there? Mm-hmm. Okay. No. So we have a couple. A couple. Um. What's next? Um. Oh, <laughs> the name Thurl Ravenscloth Croft was best known for supplying the voice of Tony. Oh. Um, and he was also the guy who sang You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. Mr. Grinch. From the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas TV special in 1966. That's so interesting. So Tony the Tiger is the same as the guy who sang that for the Grinch. Tony the Tiger is the Grinch. Well, I don't know if he was the Grinch. I know, but he's the singer of yes, the Grinch. Yes, yeah. You are a mean one. Did the Grinch speak in that TV show? Mr. That TV Grinch. thing? I don't think so. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, because it was voiced over by Dr. Seuss. Or oh, was whatever. it? Okay. Thurl. T-H-U-R-L. Thurl? Mm-hmm. Thurl? Is that a name? Thurl. Hmm. It's a weird name. It looks kind of like Scandinavian to me, but... Yeah. 1953. We're zooming through these. Maybe we have to... Maybe we yeah. The word frenemy was first used in 1953. Really? article titled Hows, about calling the Russians our frenemies. This was done by gossip columnist Walter Winchell... And the Nevada State Journal. That's so interesting. I really totally thought Frenemies was like a 2000s thing or something. Like a millennial thing. Yeah. For sure. But way back in 1952. Uh, 53. But I think it's funny time. that it wasn't a gossip column. Which yeah, I, think, I understand is like... I think a gossip yeah. column in 1953s about the Russians is probably not much of a gossip column. Not really. It's more than news. <laughs> it's not the same as it is now. Yeah. Ooh, Meghan Markle's doing this. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Yeah. Frenemies. Do you ever use the word frenemies? Yes. I'm trying to think, do I have any frenemies? Brandon's my frenemy. <laughs> Brandon's an arch frenemy. Ah, ha, ha. He's, no, he's like your arch nemesis. Yeah, I hate everything about him. But you love him all the same. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, do I have any frenemies? I don't think I do. I don't know. Cause if, no, I don't like the idea of frenemies because it's being two-faced. Hmm? No. It's, it's like being two-faced because... No! Yes, 100%. <laughs> no! A friend of me is somebody you secretly hate, but you pretend to be a friend to them. Oh, I thought it was like someone who's like your friend, but also you despise everything about them. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think so. I no. think it's more of like... But what? even if it's that, like that's still messed up. There's nobody that I want to be friends with that I despise everything about. No, but it's like... Okay, I guess so. I think... I, I, I don't despise anything about everything about anyone, but I mean... Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Frenemy just reminds me of the saying, like, the keep your friends close, enemies closer. Mm-hmm. And so you, they become a frenemy because they're an enemy, but you yeah. keep them as a friend in order to, like, keep tabs on them. I think that's probably how it was um, yeah. when a columnist used that yeah. term. So I don't want to, like, if, you're, if, I'm, if we're an enemy, we're just not going to talk. No. Have some of those, but I'm just not going to talk. That's fair, I guess. I guess it's also if you're in, like, a big group of friends... They might be part of that group, but they're the one that yeah. you don't get on with the most. Yeah. That could be a friend of me. Do I think you'll have I feel like if you just get, don't get along with them, it's just more like a... Yeah, but as in you're part of a friendship group, so you can't really say they're not... Like, if you're having all your friends over to the house, you'd have to invite them, even though you would want to invite them. Yeah. Because they're part of the friendship group. I had a few of them when I was younger, a little bit. Yeah. I probably was one of them, just even a few when I was younger. But, hey, cool. 
Fuck you. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. 1954, the RCA produced the first colored television for public use. Um, okay. Which is... Color television was 1954? Apparently so, the first one for public Dang. use anyway. So that's... Yes, that, so that means, yeah, everything before that. So Tony the Tiger would have been black and white beforehand. Everything of the war would have been black. Yeah, gosh. Um, did your mum and dad have a colour TV when they were younger? No idea. I think my mum may have. My dad would have, I don't think. Um, my dad was born in 1957, though, so they would have been about oh, for a while. Mine were like the late 60s, so they probably did. Mm-hmm. My grandma would have. No. Um, in 1954, April the 11th was apparently the most boring day in history. This there was a, no news? <laughs> well, that was the last, that was 40-something, wasn't it? Yeah. But this was according to a computer program, Tracking News. So it was within Without Tracking news, news, apparently, that was the most boring day in history. I would love to learn someone famous, or there wouldn't be anyone famous, because then it wouldn't be the most boring yeah. day in history. Yeah. That's funny. But it's funny that computers actually track that and determine that's the date. Yeah. We need um, more days like that. Today's just a boring day, guys. Nothing. Yeah. Else. No school shootings. No nope. serial killers. Yeah, guys, give us some more school shootings and serial killers. Are we asking for? Kayla? No, I'm are saying. You, are you saying you want more of that to make days less boring? No, I'm Kayla, saying. are you saying you want school shootings <laughs> happening God, every day to make no. every day an exciting day? I'm saying that every day Awful, should be Kayla. more boring. Awful. Okay, right. <laughs> Fair enough. The most noteworthy news event on that day included a general election in Belgium and the birth of a Turkish academic. Yes, it would be amazing if that was like our news for the day. Like, <laughs> Our kid has been born in Turkey today. He may become academic. Yes. Yeah, that would be not bad. That'd be it. In 1955, the first moonwalk walk ever recorded that we could find... Hold on. Oh, yes. So the first moonwalk ever recorded was performed in 1955. And I don't mean moonwalk in space. I mean, literally, the move, the moonwalk. <laughs> Michael Jackson? Yes. Well, it wasn't done by Michael Jackson here. This was performed by a tap dancer called Bill yeah. Bailey. I was, really that was confused, when it was... I was like, I don't think we've made it to the moon yet. No, we have so, not. Well, a few more years. Yes. But that was the first physical dance movie okay. moonwalk was recorded back to then, showing that Michael Jackson was not the... He was not the inventor, the inventor of the, the moonwalk. Mm-hmm. Um, can you moonwalk? No. Can you moonwalk? No, not really. No, I don't know anyone that can. No idea. Nobody can do it. I know one person. I, I don't, you don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. Nobody I knows really anyone. Do know a person. No, we don't know anyone. Whatever. In 1956, um, an official motto was used for the US. What was that official motto? What, was, what official motto was used for the US in 1956? You're saying motto? Motto. M-O-T-T-O. Okay. At first, I thought you were saying model. Or model. Like, like model you in? Um, no, the motto. What motto? Land of the free, home of the brave? Nope. Um, I don't know. What other mottos do we have? Apparently it's the official U.S. motto. <laughs> oh. Uh, mm. God bless the USA? Nope. But God closer. bless America? Nope. But closer. America on, 50th, oh, America on 34th Street might help you. I've never seen that. Have you never seen it? No. Oh, no. America the Beautiful. No. Um, you got any money on you? Beautiful for spacious skies. You got no. any money on you? I do not. Maybe. I have money in my wallet. That might help. Okay. As in long- God We Trust. Yes. Okay. In God We Trust wasn't officially the US motto until 1956. Okay. So it probably had been used before that, but it wasn't official. Um, which is, I still think it's strange as that's now still a motto for the US. I definitely thought it'd be God Bless America or we did the free and home of the brave over in God We Trust. We do know. Weird. 1957, the Soviet Union launched a Sputnik, which is the first space satellite. Sputnik. And that started the space race. The space race. We're about to go to the moon. Mm, not for another 12 years. I know. Okay. But we're almost there. It's close. Yeah. Um, 1969, right? Yes, correct. Not 1968. Not 1968. Yeah. Right, I'm confused. Why is that? It was a song on Even Stevens. Even Stevens. What? Don't ignore me. <laughs> ignore me. Don't Keep ignore going. me. I'm definitely going to ignore you. I've not actually included that on 1969. I, I had something so much more entertaining. Okay. It's not entertaining at all, but anyway. Um, 
Also, in 1957, it's a really weird one. Uh-huh. The gesture of celebrating victory by lifting a trophy up above your head. So I, I lied, this is 1958. But the gesture of celebrating a trophy by lifting it over your head um, happened in 1958 when photographers asked uh, Hildradaldo mm-hmm. Bellini, I'm sorry, friend of ours, I may have messed that name up, the captain of the Brazilian uh, team at the time, would lift the World Cup trophy after beating Sweden. So they could get a better view of it. So essentially, you know how you see that quite frequently, people yeah. trophies, but it didn't happen until 1958. Uh, and there's been a lot of things before that where the photographer was asked them to lift up so they could get a better view. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it seems weird that that hasn't, hadn't ever happened before. Why would you not lift something up? It seems... Yeah, maybe they, they didn't take that many pictures before then. Well, I guess they wouldn't, yeah. So why would you raise it up? Because they wouldn't have had as many supporters, perhaps, or as pictures. But pitch has been about 100 years, so they may have. Anyway, either which way. Um, also, also, in 1959, kiwi fruits were named after kiwi birds. Prior to 1959, do you know what, do you know what they were known as? Monkey balls. <laughs> Monkey balls! That's what Drake's dad calls them. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yes. Unfortunately, no. no. My brother <laughs> eats monkey balls straight. Like, he doesn't peel them or anything. Oh, I thought she meant like actual monkey balls. I was like, wait, what? So I actually, I knew this name and I used to call them this a little bit as well. But I think it must be because my granny or something. I'm not sure. But what what were they called? I don't know. Keep guessing. Monkey balls. No, not monkey balls. Um, Hairy fruit? (laughs) No. Uh, Less descriptive than that. Uh, Kind of. They've got a a name from a national, they've got a national name. New Zealand balls. And a uh, current other type of berry. New Zealand berry. No. Australia fruit. No. I have no idea. Have you ever heard of a gooseberry? Yeah. Okay, Chinese gooseberries is what they were called. Oh. And this was somewhat called that some places as well. Why? I don't know. I just, they were, I think because goose, gooseberries are basically big grape type looking things okay. on trees. I think these grow in the exact same manner, but they're hairier versions, I guess. I thought they were named... For New Zealand, why are New Zealand people called kiwis? Does the kiwis not grow there? There's a bird there that's called the kiwi, and that's okay. what they're named after because they have very similar bodies. Oh, okay. Like the, the kiwi is like a really small bird, really long beak and stuff. But okay. the bodies of the kiwi, I believe, well, I know they look very similar to the fruit just because okay. they're the same shape. But that happened in 1959. Interesting. And when it was first apparently used, and also. Oh no, it's got. I, I I keep forgetting. I've written good information about some of these stuff to kind of help us. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they originated in China and came to Australia in the early 1900s. So, huh. uh, so that's what it was. So they were called that, and then in 1959, when the rest of the world started using them, they were called Make kiwis it. because Make they came from uh, Australia slash New Zealand. Yeah. There we go. Very interesting. Your potatoes are smelling good. Um. Also, in 1959, scientists discovered the Y chromosome. Uh, oh, sorry, discovered the Y chromosome was needed to uh, create males. So there it we go. It was that late that they discovered that. I guess they wouldn't have had like yeah. the technology to. Yeah, just just discover chromosomes. Split them apart. Like when was sure. DNA and discovered? I don't know. I have no idea. But but probably learned yeah, then. Guess, I guess microscopes were. Name to be smaller, meaning better. There's a really good fact. I can't tell if it's part of 1960 or 1959, so I'm going to leave it to 1950. But there's some sizzle, guys, for the next episode. A real interesting fact about a certain food chain. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Um, and that's it. That was that was pretty quick. Yeah. So Ten that's the story 1950s. Down. Favorite. That's a decade. My favorite. Favorite from 1950s. Um, probably the kiwi. Yeah, I can see that's quite good. I quite liked the, um, the Frenemies. Oh, and, yeah. Knowing like them that was first used. That was quite interesting. And the most boring day, 11th of April, 1954. That's always good to know. Yeah. You have any shits and hits? Still watching you. Still kind of Still on the fence about. Watching you. Yeah. What's that song? I don't know. I haven't really had time to watch anything else. I always feel like somebody's watching me. That's it. Oh, watch me. It's not watching you. Yeah. Damn it. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen anything else. Um, Any music? No. no music. So I tried to look at some, I don't think, I think January must be crap for new music because uh, I was maybe. like looking for new stuff, but I couldn't find anything good. I was listening to 
Um, what's that girl that was in Disney that's not in Disney anymore? Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> no. And the one that dated Bieber. Was she Selena in Disney? Selena Gomez. Yeah. Listen to her new album. It's trash. It's got okay. like nothing catchy in it at all. Oh. Um, again, it's all just random R&B and hip-hop people that bring out. And again, I love that music when it's good. But there's just so much of it that's just generic to me. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can find what I've been listening to. But I don't know how to find it on my phone anymore. It's very strange. Quick, I don't quick. think I've been listening to anything. I've actually really yes. started uh, driving in silence. <laughs> Is that so you can pay more attention to the road? No. I you just, should. It's just my... <gasps> Got him. <laughs> it's just my quiet time. <laughs> my quiet time. I listened to the Ozzy Osbourne uh, Elton John song. It was meh. Oh, yeah. I like everyone likes... Well, I like Elsie's voice, but it's just... That wasn't great. And I th- that's... Excuse me, but as much as I listen to... Nothing too interesting, unfortunately. Yeah. And no new TV shows. That's about it. Yep. All right. Are we done? I think so. All right, guys. Um, as I said, look forward to the next time we do these for the 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 the, the food franchise people thing. I'm curious. So which one it is? My <coughs> guess is gonna be Chick Fil A. Ooh, is it Chick Fil A? Who knows? It's not. Um. All right, and hit us up on Mumblecast and Twitter. The, at the no at the moment cast on Twitter and Instagram and that's about it. Yeah. All right. We will see you guys later. Uh, I've been Liam. I've been Kayla. And this has been Mumblecast. Bye. Bye.